Okay, thanks. Let's do Rusty Fire next. Oh my god. Um, the de this is just a comment first. The detail of like the best friends. I love that. I had a secret best friend in grade six. We were only allowed to talk on the phone. We couldn't actually speak at school. Um, but tell me a bit about the actual shooting. I'm interested in snow continuity. Was this an all night sort of thing? Was it cold? Was it cold? Well, it was shot in Saskatchewan in uh, November. The end of November, no less. And we actually we were really lucky. Uh, right bookending our, our shoot days. We shot for two nights. And uh, the temperature was about minus 21 the day before, and it dipped down to about minus five, minus six on our shooting day. So we were very fortunate. And then the uh, the morning after we finished shooting, it went back down to like minus 25 again. So we were very lucky. Uh, actually, I'd say you two are very lucky. <laughs> um, sorry, what was the rest of the question? Um, snow continuity. Snow continuity. Yeah, we didn't even worry about continuity with the snow. The only thing that we made sacred and, and holy was that two, the double tracks there where they walked towards the car. Um, afterwards, you, you wouldn't even notice it, but actually Lawrence, our director, he's also a, a fantastic visual effects guy, and he actually went in and painted in a lot of the snow, uh, especially for that last shot, which you know, the camera sort of goes up and dips back down. That was all trampled upon, so Lawrence made all of that snow there. Wow, a director that can make snow, not just films. So ladies, um, tell me a bit, how was the shoot for you guys? I mean, was there a lot of improvisation or was it mostly sticking to the script? Um, there was quite a bit of improvisation. He pretty much, um, he gave us the, the script and that was pretty much the outline, but he just said be natural with it and if anything, you know, if you, if you feel the need to, to improvise and add like a few, you know, Words and such. Yeah, yeah. That was actually, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I don't know, Lawrence, um, very, very laid back and very great director to work with, but um, a lot of it was improvised and even um, kind of the background of each character is something that we kind of made up on our own, so yeah. It was funny when uh, I did a lot of test screenings with this when we were in the editing and People are always saying, did she do that? Can she actually make that sound herself? <laughs> they thought that it was actually a sound effect. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's actually sound. <laughs> Human voices. Magnificent. Do we have a question for Russ and Pyre? Because I have another one. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so can we talk about the cigarette butt self-mutilation? Um, it was in the script. Um, yeah, it was in the script. But um, I guess kind of like, uh, in a sense, I had to kind of come up with why it would make sense to the script and stuff. So when I was thinking about my character, I definitely um, tried to portray that she had come from an abusive past. So when I do grab, the characters are Sally and Ginny. Those are their names. I played Sally, this is Ginny, and um, when Sally goes to grab Ginny's hair, uh, I think it was kind of um, a reflection on Sally's past, and with the cigarette burns, I imagine that's something that either she's on her mother's arm or something like that, so. One last question for you guys. Um, was it based at all on an urban legend or an existing ghost story, or was it completely an original idea? So the, where the script came from is through the Canadian Trust Screenplay Competition, and Daniel O'Day was our writer. Um, and this actually, the whole image of this, the car, is what started this whole story. Um, and so Daniel is actually, he's an Alberta boy, he's got a ranch outside of Calgary. Um, and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's, we have what's called the hoodoos in Alberta, which is, it's sort of like sandblasted stone that's been there since the dinosaurs have been around. And so th there's actually an area on his ranch where there's a bunch of hoodoos sort of there, and there's an old car beaten up. And Dan just thought this is a really striking image, and he often sort of wondered, like, you know, there's all sorts of urban legends and stuff like that. And there really wasn't one that existed, so he thought he'd create his own in regards to this, because he just sort of had this idea of this car being an inferno. So that's sort of how it started. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. So that's